Hi friends, I'm, I'm my name is Evan McMullen and I love NFTs. Uh, my focus is off-chain data, so all of the data about our assets, ourselves, that's not fit for public consumption and global availability. Um, specifically, I'm really excited about NFTs that unlock experiences both in the digital realm and in real life for a real metaverse. Hi everybody, my name is Deanna Bailey. I work for a space technology company called Logistics. And I was actually at the first conference uh, two, years two years ago. ago. Three years ago, right? Three years ago. Three, and it's huge now. Like, what a big difference. So welcome, everybody. We're so glad you guys are here. Glad the community is expanding. Um, and I guess we should talk about community stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, speaking of, like, explosive growth, last year's conference had 1,000 attendees. This year's conference had over 5,000 sold out tickets. And then on top of that, an additional uh, supply was released. And then on top of that, you have literally 200 pop-up events, satellites, activations, din restaurant, uh, sorry, dinners, lunches, brunches, everything and anything under the sun. And it's only going to get bigger. This is literally like the start of South by Southwest to me I all over it. again. I love it. And, and my NFT sold out. Hey. My speaker NFT sold out. Woo -woo. Congrats on that. Well, um, yeah, and then I am, uh, I'm your host. My name's Eric. I go by Motivate on Clubhouse, if you know me. I run a community called NFTS.tips, or the Tips community. We're the largest NFT and DeFi community in the world. Uh, we've handheld, I want to say, over a thousand projects, and a lot of your favorite PFPs were actually derived within our walls. So your fuck renders, your beeples, your ferocious, your David Cho, the Shepherd Fairy, your... Everyone who's everyone is, is in the community and in the space, and I'm just happy to see everybody really gravitating to education and empowerment and independence, and this is, is really exciting. So, all that said, uh, yeah, let's get into community use cases. I can start, or one of you can. I would be happy to start. Um, so, to share with you guys a few experiences that I have unlocked with NFTs recently. Um, one, you guys have to promise not to tell my mother because I got ERC 270, uh, 271 tattooed on the back of my neck. Hey. Proof of ink that I have submitted to InkDAO to show that I am as, just as committed to immutability as everybody else and collectively together as InkDAO, where we use our proof of ink for entry. Uh, we are working on onboarding artists, creators, tattoo artists specifically into Web3 to extend their creative practice. Um, Beyond that, I'm also a member, a token-gated member of an investment club called Dow Jones. Um, and I really love uh, helping artists, creators, and musicians unlock experiences at their concerts using NFTs. Um, so I've worked with Live Nation, Insomniac, to um, bring NFTs and blockchain-based experiences to live music festivals, just like the scavenger hunts that we're enjoying with POAP today here in New York City. Um, but what makes all of these experiences similar is that I hold tokens that unlock experiences for me both in digital space and in physical space, which makes these communities, these token permissioned adventures, both exist on, or exist on multiple planes at the same time. So our ability to connect in physical space and build reputation in that physical space can carry into digital space. So I can make friends and interact and have experiences IRL, and those experiences can inform the privileges I enjoy in digital spaces. Um, one thing that I think is, is particularly noteworthy here today is that we are all now forming a community and we all have the opportunity to pick up some NFTs, um, whether you know, from the NFT NYC website, from some POAPs that you know, we're seeing around. And so we have all together joined in a community that is token gated, and we have the ability to decide what experiences we want to carry on because of that. So whether, you know, whether it's something silly and fun, uh, like inked out, or whether it's something you know, meaningfully engaging at scale, like an artist, it is up to us to decide what kinds of token permissioned adventures we want to build. Go ahead. That's, I, I was just hoping the tattoo said blockchain is forever. <laughs> my relationship is not. Uh, I might get that uh, tatted myself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, She'll love uh, it. <laughs> no, you're good. Uh, 
if you'd like to go. Yeah, so um, my company is really interesting in the sense that I heard a couple speakers talking about non-traditional use cases for NFTs. And so we're not art, we're not pretty pictures. Uh, we deal mostly with space assets and the process it takes to get things to space. But what I want you guys to take a minute to consider is what a revolutionary point we are in our time. With the exploration or the explosion of space exploration and space tourism, we are going to entertain populating another planet probably in our lifetime. And when we go, to be able to scale from one planet to another is going to be extremely difficult. But with the things we're setting up now, like DAOs, NFTs, blockchain, you're creating those immutable records that will scale where we need them to go in space. And so as we're playing around with these concepts right now, buying things, trading things, seeing what works, testing protocols, we're actually shaping the next step in humanity. And I just want you guys to take a second and think of how amazing that is. I'm basking in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you look like it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the uh, party dude hard last night glow. Uh -oh. that's, that's what uh -oh. we call this. Um, but no, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think that I, I keep reinforcing the idea and the thought of this being a digital renaissance for people to recognize and really read the room and the atmosphere and the environment. Like, this is heavy lifting that's going on, and it's unlike the stock market that starts and stops and runs a certain amount of time and a certain duration, crypto does not sleep. Therefore, there is constantly people working to push things forward, and the speed in which you can move money around without any... KYC or I dotting or T crossing and for those that don't know KYC is know your customer uh, You can get the crypto glossary in my NFT insiders guide, but um, yeah It's it's like a lot of the restrictions and restraints of yesterday are no longer here Therefore we can move at the speed of light to get shit done And that's a beautiful thing considering everybody pretty much just lost about a year and a half to two years of their lives and having to pivot and you know, make things work. So I, I personally like on a community use case basis, like I made these uh, non fungible tokens, right for the uh, <laughs> for the NFT insiders guide. And it's at NFT insiders guide dot app. And you can buy the NFT. But this NFT gives you a physical one that you redeem by meeting me, right? You get a proof of it, I give you this and then this gives you access to private events. This gives you access to my mainnet, my golf blockchain week in Dubai, my art basil, my NFT basil, gives you all of this stuff. And you're buying into something that isn't with a anonymous creator, yeah. you know? There's proof of work. So these just increase in appreciated value over time because I'm not gonna stop what I'm doing and have been doing for a career for 10 years. Yeah. So from digital to physical and back to digital, this is a perfect example of a use case that I think we're gonna start seeing more of, specifically as people are understanding how to cultivate community in a really innovative way. Sure. Eric, I think you make an outstanding point that you had a community before NFT showed up, right? So you needed to sort out how can you take the reason that your community loves you and help them see that they can express that same affinity in a new form with NFTs. We don't build communities one person at a time, you know, from zero. We migrate communities and existing affinities and relationships into new planes. So um, if we think back to the 1990s, one of the earliest community migrations that we saw in tech was the AOL CD drop, where they, uh, they sent out CDs that allowed you to download AOL, or American Online, to uh, basically all the American postal addresses essentially bootstrapping a new connected network on top of the public identifiers of the US Postal Service. And so what Eric had to do was bootstrap his existing community relationships into a new form, using these NFTs as a method of not only distributing assets, but creating a long-standing, nearly permanent relationship between him and his token holders. And I think this is one of the greatest challenges that NFTs face in the community space, is how do we migrate our communities from where they live today on Discord, Twitter, um, Google Docs, how do we migrate them to a new plane while maintaining the authenticity of the connection and the reason that they're gathering, 
but giving them the tools to interact in new ways. Um, and so I see a lot of really exciting and cool tools in the NFT space that allow us to generate the assets. But what I don't see a lot of is a guiding journey, a welcome mat for how uh, you can take your community from existing spaces and unite them in shared experiences using NFTs. Um, so that's a particular path forward that I'm really excited about, um, you know, working with artists, working with creators who have, like Eric, these existing communities, um, but are trying to define the process by which they can uh, expand their experience and, and turn a few web tube touch points like email and discord into a full on metaverse where the container for narrative extends across planes of experience. I just want to touch nut on that and give everybody some free game. One, marketing is king, but distribution is King Kong, right? Marketing is king, distribution is King Kong. Two, don't build castles on other people's sand. So if you're building a community on Clubhouse, on Twitter Spaces, on Facebook, on Instagram, Snapchat, Discord, WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever it is, you need to be able to have on-demand ability to bring those people into your room whenever it is. I have an 80,000 person email list with a 73% open rate. I can pack any room in just about any major metropolitan city if I'm doing something that merits activating that list and driving traffic in. So you always want to be able to have a, a communication and connection to your community. And I think it's really important to like understand these brands that existed and exist now, they didn't have communities. They had fans, they had supporters, but they didn't have community. And now they have an opportunity to really dive deep and showcase how strong a Balenciaga or a Gucci or Prada or Hundreds or G-Shock or Chinatown Market or whatever it is can actually build. So Eric, I think it's really interesting that when you call out to your, uh, to your community, you use email to reach your NFT holders. Yeah. You're using Web2 identifiers to connect with your Web3 community. That's really interesting. It sounds like we need a little bit more of a decentralized stack if you want to reach out to people Airdrop. in the way you're asking them to interact with you. Airdrop. That's it. Airdrop is direct to consumer to the rawest and truest form. And NFTs aren't about having 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers. I'm having artists drop six figure generating projects and they're great. Like artistically, integrity is all in it these artists deserve to win and they never had a platform and they never had a voice, but because they can tell a story and they can add so much color and texture to it with NFTs because there's so many layers, that story gets a life of its own and it becomes a very powerful product for being a vehicle. And all of us are vehicles. We're all vehicles for change. We're all vessels, right? So, you know, I, um, to help blow up this space a little bit more earlier this month, I don't know if any of you have been in Penn Station at all this past month, but like you probably see a bunch of green billboards that say mogul on them and a giant QR code because we took, uh, we took over 200 ad placements and billboards and pillars and wrapped them all in NFT uh, quotes and one-liners to drive traffic to a collection that was featured on the homepage of OpenSea for five days that I had. And... Uh, we were changing people's lives because the 88 artists in that collection were from all over the world and they're messaging me saying that they're able to not only pay their rent three times over with what they made from theirs or that they've been able to raise the floor and they've never been able to do get past a certain point but that awareness allowed them these opportunities so it's really on us to like figure out unique and new ways of pushing this stuff forward and yeah yeah, well, definitely the monetary part is a good incentive. Um, but when you think about like the ability to change people's lives with this technology, you can't create a better loyalty in a community, right? So it's like you take your idea, you and the, and the great thing about this technology is there's so many different things you can do with it. Like literally the sky is the limit. So you take your idea, you put it out there, and the people whose lives you change are the ones who will follow you to the end of time. And I love that like... NFTs are that digital representation of the human connection that we need that just exploded because of COVID, right? It was like, I want to feel a part, I need to feel a part, and I can't, but that NFT in the metaverse, like to submerge you in it, it makes you feel like you're a part of it, even when you can't be. You're a legacy brand, right? <laughs> oh yeah. You're a legacy brand. 
what better way to mint and document your legacy than putting it onto the blockchain? That's right. Get you my know? NFT. So I disagree. Oh, yeah? I think that <laughs> the blockchain is not an appropriate place for personally identifiable information. I think that that's doxing. That's self-doxing. You don't want to put data about yourself that is private to you, personal to you, that you want to own and control in a globally available, public, uh, you know, publicly accessible form. I think that we're getting to kind of a funny point. You know, we want to we want to make NFTs out of everything, but um, but do you really want to make an NFT that includes your your email address, your Twitter account? Do you want that to be publicly accessible to everyone and then tradable or sellable? So, like, if I, for example, I had if I owned ParisHilton.eth, the the you know ENS address, I could put Paris Hilton's email in there. I could put her Twitter in that text record, and I could LARP as Paris Hilton in Web3. And so I think we are coming to a point where we need another form of trustless data that is not publicized, that is not globally available, that is not on-chain. Because otherwise, if we start defaulting to NFTs for holding our legacy, containing our information, sharing things about ourselves, those NFTs can be sold, bought, traded, exchanged, and do not represent a strong basis for identity. Um, so sorry to hop in there, but I, I feel very strongly about this one. I respect any difference in opinion. I can take it. But I will say that in the decentralized or centralized conversation or maintaining anonymity while doing things or being public and doxxed, right? So that goes into trust and safety, right? That goes into transparency and authenticity. That goes into identity, right? So I have an NFT for my Genesis collection that's going to come out next year that was created by one of three people that have a proprietary way of creating mint, creating bills, fiat. And uh, they uh, are one of three people in the world that can do the line work and holograms and inscriptions and everything on those. And so he basically made me my own money. And I'm letting people purchase as that Genesis collection, I'm letting people purchase that money for services that they would typically render from me. So instead of paying for entry to my parties or to book me to DJ or to book me to host or to get me to ghost write a verse for you or do brand partnerships, sponsorships, marketing, consulting, whatever it is, you just cash out your Eric bills or whatever they are, you know? But that's where my brand being on the blockchain is actually super valuable because I am doxxed and my history and work uh, proof is, is validating the uh, ever appreciating value of that. And you're going to want me to win just as much as a PFP project that you're financially tied to. Oh, I absolutely agree with you there. I think that for a public brand where it is helpful in the same way that we post things on our LinkedIn to attribute your past experiences and expertise as a source of strength, a source of value, totally chill. I'm talking about STI results don't belong on the blockchain. Your driver's license, not on the blockchain. Would not recommend it. Um, so for, and, or things like your current employment status, that's gonna change probably. So you need a form of data that's gonna be flexible, personal, and mutable, and can evolve just like you do. Or for NFTs, for example, we should be able, and we currently can with partnerships like Chainlink and Ceramic, create NFTs that change based on the weather, based on your location, based on their environment or context. Um, and so immutability is a trait that we can choose to, uh, to utilize, um, or we can also uh, sell expensive entries in other people's databases. And don't forget, in Europe, you can't put personal information, right? The right to not exist is there. And so that's a no-go anyway. So at yeah. least they don't even have the option. <laughs> um, but you start, you know, I, I think it's a tricky subject to put things on, not put things on, because our information is everywhere anyways. Like, there's so many hacks all the time. and Because it's stored in a centralized way. Yeah. Uh, the, the marketing side of me is very torn with this because I do a lot of street teaming and guerrilla postering and I came from doing flyer parties and you get the address an hour beforehand and the only way you get it is through a tangible uh, item going back and forth or now a digital one. So RSVPs and email lists and knowing everybody in the room and what they do and how old they are and where they're from so I can cherry pick and network the fuck out of everything is kind of my, my jam. Yeah, but on the flip side, I don't think everybody wants that, right? <laughs> let, me, let me put you onto something. 
Let me put you on to the other side of the coin of NFTs. So NFTs are on-chain, public, and immutable. Yeah. There's a new technical standard, a new crypto primitive, called verifiable credentials. They are off-chain, private, revocable, can be set to expire, and are shared only with the selective disclosure of their subject. And so you can allow for other people, other parties, environments to read whatever data that you own and control. So for example, in your event, you could have an event space where you could determine what's the demographic of your audience, how old are they, where are they from, what activities have they participated in before. But you could do all of that without reading the plain text of their data. You yeah. could just compute upon it. Yeah. Um, so uh, this, is, this is where it gets spicy, when we mix the on-chain and the off-chain. Yeah, no, I, I love the hybrid use of Web3 tools and like even these cards are mint gated, right? Unless it's in your wallet, you can't access it. And I think that we're going to start seeing a lot of that happen because technically all of these PFP projects specifically are uh, rapid growth communities that your commonality is an image. So that doesn't really lay the foundation or structure without good leadership to actually have a strong community unless you have good community managers, aka another job for people. Um, you know, so... I think the mixing of all of these things and, and really like stretching what we can do with everything from IPFS to uh, smart contracts that are completely automated for like a 50 step process. Like I literally saved coming out here. I, I, did, a, I did a smart contract that would have costed me somewhere like 10 grand going back and forth with my lawyer. And the fact that my entertainment lawyer didn't get that job but I showed her like what was done and she's like, I don't understand it, but this looks like I might be out of a job soon. I was like, no, it looks like you might have to brush up on Web3, DeFi, decentralized everything, NFTs, blockchain, like take it in now, you know? Yeah, you know, for all you guys out there doing projects and wanting to build community, um, I've, so I've been in blockchain for about five years. I've worked for multiple projects and, and all I can say is, if you're coming at a project with how can I make money and what can this do for me, you will never build your community. Like You have to build something that changes people's lives or inspires people. It needs to make a difference. People need to care. If you build something and nobody cares, you probably should build something else. Blockchain is a multiplayer game. You cannot have a blockchain by yourself. No. <laughs> not not going to make it, you know? It's, 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 it's bigger than you. It is. I, and I think that's like really the, the beautiful part of it though, right? Because at the speed that things move faster than ever before, and then we're still getting more clarity on that end, plus being able to customize tokenomic systems and coins, as well as integrate that into NFT projects, as well as the metaverses ranging from crypto voxels to Sambian to blah, blah, blah. Like there's just so much diversity and uncovered creativity and ways of expression that we've yet to see. And I'm excited for it. I don't, I don't care about how many units you sold and how much you made. Like that shit doesn't move me. What moves me is how well thought out, how methodical, how pragmatic your, your process is and then maybe showing me your process. And what's really crazy is I like, I was working with the co-founder of LimeWire not too long ago, and he launched a uh, NFT music platform that competes with Audius. And even with the majors of Warner and Universal and Sony and BMG, etc., the music industry was built off of faulty contracts and yeah. basically manipulated things to leave artists starving, right? Now, a starving artist or a hungry artist might put out their best work because of that scarcity and that like, hunger that they need to have in order to be beyond check to check. But now I can give credit to every single person on a record of every single track of every record and I only need 10,000 fans. And on top of that, I can make sure that they're paid in perpetuity residuals. Yeah. And I don't need a label. I don't need a label ever again. There's no reason for me to have a label unless they're providing marketing, promotion, branding, and shit that I can probably find somewhere else. And so I think what we're about to see is some really, really incredible stuff in the TV and film world. 
as well as the fashion world. We're seeing 3D fashion, and I'm producing a 3D fashion show right now, like a, a VR um, metaverse fashion show, and catwalk, all of it. People are buying digital threads for 30 and 40K, and then wearing those jackets and those shoes in other metaverses. Like, this shit is real. It's, it's, it's all out there, and it's all happening, and if you blink, you might miss it. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm pumped. If you can't tell, I'm like, I'm fucking excited. <laughs> it's the metaverse in space. Uh, can't forget space. I, I built three metaverses this year with th uh, even, uh, there's a company, XR Miami. They did a 15,000 person Burning Man experience. 15,000 people live, no lag, and it was incredible. I had them for NFT NYC and my insider's guide build me a subway metaverse. So you basically get your token and you go in and then there's, um, ads for all of the different events and things that are happening but it's like that type of utility and use case is endless and I think that realistically every conference and every festival is going to have its digital iteration and it's not going to be just live streaming multi-cam you know it's and Twitch and Versus are perfect examples as well like we're, we're getting to a very 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 important point in time we already are but it's it's getting there and kids born today are coming into this world with all of these tools at their disposal so it is going to get absurd yeah. in maybe the best way ever i don't know it'll be old by the time they're old it'll be new <laughs> technology i'll be first in line for human cloning <laughs> back in my blockchain days <laughs> back in my day when we had 30 day aol trio disc i got a shoulder tap so i think i might be pulled uh into the SEC conversation we're having back here. No, I'm just kidding. So we have, uh, <laughs> we have three minutes or less left, and I would like to have you all give one valuable piece of advice that you think everybody in the audience can really benefit from hearing because you both are very intelligent and articulate, and I just want to continue talking. But. All right, so I've been asked to share a piece of advice. Um, my first piece of advice is if you do not yet have a hardware wallet, order one immediately. <laughs> um, and, uh, and secondly, I would encourage you all, um, we are NFT enthusiasts, so if you have never minted an NFT before, even if you do not consider yourself to be a particularly creative or artistic person, I encourage you to go through the steps so that you can experience it yourself. Uh, so I'll do two quick things, and I said it in my video too. So number one, for all you NFT people out there, token economics, so huge. Like your project success will a lot depend on your token economics. So make sure you vet it, make sure you have other people look at it. Don't just think you're gonna throw a video on an NFT and somebody's gonna pay 30,000 for it. That's not, maybe, but that's not really how it works. Um, and then the second thing is, you know, Lunergistics, my, my space company, we are doing fractional ownership of space assets. And for a limited time, we are doing pre-sale subscriptions. So if you go to Lunergistics.com, you can get your subscription NFT and invest in space assets. And you don't have to be an accredited investor. It's open to everybody. That's amazing. And I'm not going to give any financial advice, but I will say that you should always do your research which is an acronym of D-Y-O-R. Um, and say what you mean, mean what you say, speak with intention. That's just general life advice, right? And also, don't put too much pressure on your project and yourself. Give yourself breaks. This shit does not stop. And I'm seeing a lot of people dealing with a lot of mental health issues and a lot of other issues tied to their emotional attachment to their projects. And it's really sad that I'm, I'm not hearing enough conversations about mental health and just like wellness in the space. It's gonna be there when you wake up. It was there when you went to sleep. It's gonna keep moving. You can't stop it. So take your time, pace yourself, drink water, get fresh air, sunlight, all that. Take a break, take it easy, and don't worry about your project selling out in 24 hours, okay? It's all good. Don't, don't hype yourself up on a Genesis drop to the moon and then it not pan out the way that you want and then say, fuck crypto and NFTs. Like, that's not, it's not the way to play the game.